<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Quick little probably hour-long stream tonight. Uh, then I got to start getting ready for the D&D shenanigans. But I figured let's jump in and start working on the Polar Research Lab a little bit. <laughs> Hello, Spicy Beans. Luckily, Drew, Beyond Drew TV, donated this, uh, this dome to us yesterday. So we will be able to have a little bit of greenery in here. I think we'll work on... We'll work on in here today, and then we'll work on the actual polar bear paddock as well, which will also be connected to this via the domes. Yeet. So you could figure like the little researchers and stuff would just could walk through these domes and not have to go outside into the cold to do their research and observe the the bears. Probably go out that far with that one. Hey, Marine Finn. So yeah, let's get in here where it's warm. And we're just gonna make it just like a, a little tiny nature area in here with just trees and bushes and rocks. Um, just a place for them to kind of escape a little bit and get out of the cold, you know. And you know, so they don't go crazy out here. <laughs> try to kill a bunch of, try to kill each other. Hey, Amalia. Thank you for stopping back by. We're just going to jump right into this because I don't have a terrible amount of time. Get us a nice little, little raised hill here together before we start adding some, some trees and such in. May try to do like a little, some kind of little walking path or something, you know, around, around this. Guys, this is one of those weekends where I'm not, like, actually dreading Sunday evening because I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> so this is one of those rare occasions where Sunday night has come along. And I do not have to worry about waking up early tomorrow, so that is a good thing. Hey Crocs, hey Michael. Get you in a little like hour long Planet Zoo stream in this evening. Kind of continuing our work here on the on the polar habitat. Now 
Elm trees, I think, are a little too big for this deal. That Himalayan birch fits pretty good. This is going to be like a little implied little walking, stoned walking path. Hey, Bold! You missed some Red Dead horse action yesterday evening. We found a really nice painted horse. I still have it. She is awesome. Uh, Savannah thought we should name her Tuxedo, cause like the whole top of the whole top of her is painted. It's like it's like someone spilled a bucket of black paint just on the top of her head, all the way like to on the top of her back, like where your saddle would be, and then all the rest of her, her underbelly, the sides, everything else is white. <laughs> Yes, she is gorgeous. But like I said, we I've still got her. She's the main horse now, so. She'll be back. We had talked about doing stairs like from up there, but I think I'm just gonna kind of just close this off as like an, a little observation point. Just cause the stairs, yeah, they just didn't look right. Back out under the cold, just a quick second. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, people are exhausting. <laughs> hey, extra coconuts here. Yeah, I just made a quick Walmart run. People are absolutely exhausting. <laughs> uh, in their pajamas. Well, Coconut, this is a, like a polar research center. Um... You know, they are kind of out here right in the middle of nowhere and, um, you know, performing rescue miss missions, research, um, and just like the ranger station over there, they spend long amounts of time out here. So what we thought we could do is give them like a little bit of a, of like a nature dome here. So, you know, they just wouldn't have to kind of stare at the snow and go crazy the whole time. <laughs> So that is kind of like the idea of their little nature trail in here. Um, because, you know, like we're kind of going with the story of the ranger station. Um, they, they can't just run people. This is so far out. They can't run people back and forth. Like, you know, just after eight hours. So these people, these researchers and uh, the scientists and stuff, they spend months at a time um, out here. So this is kind of like their little compound that we're we're making them um, and we're gonna actually have a um, like a polar bear holding area when they have to bring them in for you know closer observation and stuff like that thank you guys uh oh get gaming is trying a red roughed lemur habitat <laughs> those are pretty they can be pretty fun to design for you have to shoot me over a picture Jacoby's here. Yeah, we're just, uh, you know, you just jump in and just jump in and try to throw you something together. You know, that's what I typically do on these. I'm just like, you know, it's what I've told um, Bold before. Just uh, throw, throw some spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And more times than not, these pieces are, they just end up being so cohesive together. You don't, you know, you just don't really need to, a lot of times you don't really need to mess with them a lot if you can if you can get you a good little, uh, good little combination going, trying out these different pieces. Hey, thanks, Wolf Pup. And you know, doing this little inside section like this, it um, it gives me that uh, the the little bit of foliage, uh, you know. Um, action that I need here. This is probably the only time where I'm actually going to leave that tall grass just because it looks so awesome kind of between the, the rock here. Doesn't it? I mean, normally I just like flatten that out and, you know, but this is, uh, this is going to work out pretty cool, I think. <laughs> yeah, Coconut, you'll have to get your computer going when you can. P uh, Planet Zoo's a little intensive, but it's not as bad as, like, Planet Coaster was on rigs. Planet Zoo's a little more PC-friendly. You don't have to have, like, you know, a monster, you know, running <laughs> dual 2080 TIs or a Titan. You can... It's a little more forgiving. These kind of work out a little better when you align them to surface. They just kind of have a, they lay, they lay to the surface really good. Let's 
try to figure us out. Maybe just a little more pop of color. Could probably get one of these tree branches to lay over, kind of leaning up against the rock. If I was the if I was these people, I'd come out here and set on this log. You know what'd be cool? I wonder if we could almost do like a little water feature coming down from like a little tiny stream that empties out into a pond. And then, you know, they could come out and set and be able to listen to a little bit of churning water, you know, just have a... Maybe we can try that. I just don't know if I can make it look right. I might be able to... Let's just go back into our rocks here. Might be able to even add some moss-covered rocks kind of near the water. Let's just see if we can get us one little stream and a pond going. We can kind of use these rocks here to kind of direct the water, you know? kind of get a little pond area going. Hey, critters. Hey, Death, what's up, buddy? Death has not made the Planet Zoo switch. He is still pretty much exclusively a coaster guy. <laughs> So we do not want glass anymore. Yeah, Death, what we're doing here in Critters is we are continuing um, our polar bear like research center here. So kind of what we're focusing on this evening because got about a little bit, probably got another 30 minutes left. Um, we are trying to get the researchers a little bit of greenery, um, kind of almost like a small little park that they can come in and... Uh, and, you know, just get out of the snow and out of all the white and, you know, take in some, take in some fresh air inside here. <laughs> Claire, you are a tad late. I'm in a little bit of a rush this evening. <laughs> so we, we jumped right in and started, but we are, uh, I, you know me, I can't, I can't not have a little bit of waterfall action. So we're doing like, not necessarily a waterfall but um, we're doing like a little stream and a pond here for the researchers. It's going to kind of spill out right here. Oh yeah, yeah, they are, there definitely is, we've got the snow biome here. Or you can make it snow. Really cool. So I'm hoping for Planet Coaster 2, we, uh, we have weather, you know? We need like some thunderstorms and snow and 
all of that. That'd be awesome. All right, let's, we'll get to the stream. Yep, it's an s Dan waterfall. <laughs> we'll get to the stream and stuff here in a minute, but let's, um, let's dress up the pond just a little bit. Because we don't want to, we don't want to keep just these little exposed edges here. We can make that look a little better. Maybe we might even put like a little, little dock area over here or something. Hey, thanks, Savannah. Yeah, we uh, had to get in here a little bit and start working on the dome. Oh, no, uh, th these are piece by piece. Uh, my buddy Beyond Drew made this dome for his zoo and made it into a quick uh, blueprint for me yesterday. Um, and yeah, now we're going to incorporate it in the Polar Research Center. Hey, Will, what's up, buddy? Um, you know, it's it, uh, the dome is like perfect size, really, for me to kind of start building in. It's, it's like the walls aren't getting in my way too terrible. I've had to change camera angle a couple times, but... Nothing, nothing too game-breaking here. Really dress up the pond a little bit with these two. Not too much, but, you know. Probably get some cattails in here, too. Yeah, Will, do not be afraid to mix and match pieces. <laughs> that is one of my biggest tips I can give you. Just jump in and start throwing things together. It does not have to be... Uniformity does not have to enter your mind if you don't want it to. This one's on the workshop now. Zekin's got some really cool domes, but his are, they're pretty, pretty, pretty well put together. It, you could put your own spin on them, um, but his are, yeah, he's kind of, he's done a lot of the legwork. not even need the little dock. So this would be a pretty cool little nature dome to kind of run around out here in it, wouldn't it? When you're off. All right, let's see if I can barely hide some little effects here. Gonzalo, thank you. Cheers from Spain, buddy. Get 
get some of this rapid foam hid if I can. Oh yeah, you're definitely going to get your little bit better effects here. They have done a wonder with the VFX. Mr. David Crossland, I believe. Get that a little hid. And then one thing too, Claire, do not forget with your waterfalls, you it's always best if you can um, add a little bit of mist. The mist can really kind of sell the all this action and you know the turning of all this water. And it can kind of help hide your, you know, your little your little VFX pieces. I wish we could toggle those off. There we go. So see now, I mean, it's not too much, but we definitely have the action of a little stream here that they could kind of come out and walk around. And you could even, I mean, you could even dress this up a little more. You could have some smaller, like we have some, I think we have some smaller little Little logs. No, they're not that small, but... Kind of lay some logs across this. And it just kind of helps break up the water, you know, the like the brown of the... Because obviously this isn't real water up here, but this can kind of help break up your eye looking back there at the brown. And then what we can do is kind of just dress this up with some ferns. Kind of hide whatever you need to hide. And, you know, you're in there. See, now it's almost like they have their own little, kind of like their own little ecosystem out here. They can come out here and relax by the pond or take a lap around the, the dome. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, actually, Will, I, um, I, 
built a kind of like a small scale replica of the black bear um, exhibit in Knoxville. It's in Pine Creek. Yes, Malik, I did watch. It's almost six minutes of gameplay that they released. We will definitely be doing some cyberpunk, cyberpunk live streams once this gets rolling. Hopefully on the 11th. I wasn't able to take, um, I wasn't actually able to take the 10th off, but I was able to grab up the Friday the 11th and uh, make kind of like a, I've got like a three day weekend going on now that I will uh, get a bunch of cyberpunk streaming in. So that is going to be epic, hopefully, if it releases. <laughs> And also, too, Will, like when you're placing these bushes and stuff like this, always remember to just give um, give Z a little tap and um, rotate them, you know, so they don't look, so they don't start looking real staticky on you. Like, you know, you, you don't you don't want to just click like this. <laughs> it's like, you know, you want to you want to put a little variation on the on the plant work. I think people, when we get this on the workshop and they get out here and they, when they zoom into the dome, they're going to be like, what the? <laughs> That's a good thing though, right? Those look like they could have maybe cooked those textures a little better. That looks kind of like a like a mod you would see on that plant. I don't know if that that one kind of kind of seems like it slipped QA a little bit. <laughs> Gonna hug these up against these rocks here. Really, really good looking plant. <laughs> yeah, they kind of they kind of missed it a little bit on that particular plant, didn't they? <laughs> Let's not let us forget about back here as well.
Lighting, let's see. Let's go ahead and see what kind of looks good in here. Huh? I think some oranges. Like, let's just see. Could do some, like, orange glow. That could look good. Let's just kind of try it. You know, we could even put some, um, we could even put some torches out here or something. Long as it wasn't, long as it wouldn't like, um, suffocate people or build up in here. Maybe do like a purplish kind of glow up here at the waterfall. Kind of mixed in with that orange. The snow is coming down. You know, that light like that kind of gives the, the area a little more scene, doesn't it? Kind of like it's almost like a little up light could be planted over there if they're out here at night. Might even see over here on the other side. Oh yeah, it really brings out a cool glow in, the, uh, in those flowers as well. Just so it's not so dark out here, you know, if they want to come out here at night. Mix that light in with some with some of that blue.
Well, Bold, we're lighting. You didn't miss a whole lot. We are lighting up the inside of the dome. If they want to come out here at night and sit and chat or relax. Ooh, you know what? We need more lighting out here, too, don't we? Sorry. I'll tell you what, lighting can still be kind of a little wonky in this game because, I mean, look how massively, you know, just accentuated and powerful that light is compared to just, like, other ones you'd put up. Like, you know, that, that still seems a little weird to me. see like some of these don't even make it to the ground. That's just weird. Yeah. Yep, that's a good point. Sometimes you do have to do that. I think the next stream's going to be cool because we will, um, we're going to really be able to get in here and kind of take our time because I've got to run here in about 10 minutes. We'll be able to get in here and take our time and figure out a really cool looking uh, polar bear um, kind of like containment area, you know? We'll just, we're gonna pretend like these are like high pressurized doors or something. <laughs> Yep, you got it, Claire. It is D&D &D night tonight. <laughs> so, so, it's almost time to start getting ready for that. Figuring out what I'm going to say. <laughs> 
especially because tonight <clears throat> tonight's going to be a big dialogue night um, just because we're going back into a town. So it's not like, you know, we're out in the middle of the woods or anything right now and might have to like fight something coming up. It's it's going to be, at least for the first part, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty dialogue heavy. A lot of role playing. Yeah, that'd be cool to have seals. I did not know that. DN December. That sounds cool. Yeah, Mask, he's doing an awesome job on that. He's our DM. And, um,. Yeah, that you just it really really helps just having that um, having that visual, you know. Oh, if you guys didn't get to see our other weirdness at night here, eh, this is kind of what our other little two live stream builds look like. There is Storybrook Cottage, so those those lights and stuff ended up working okay, you know. This cottage is like a mix between creepy, like something creepy could be going on in there, but also maybe just like a nice little wholesome cottage. <laughs> and here is the, which you probably wouldn't ever hardly see this in the snow, but this is, uh, this is the ranger station at night. in the little veterinary center. You know what we also need to kind of mess with as well is I need to get some, um, like a snowmobile designed or something. I think there's a couple on the workshop, but that would be one of those things where I think it would be cool to try to custom design. Oh, I know. When he had those ribs seasoned up, that looked epic. You know that smelled good. <laughs> Drew's gonna come back in this like, later and be like, what, what did you do? Yes, good job, Jonas. <laughs> Just trying to
trying to think of anything these last couple minutes that we could kind of wrap up on or turn our attention to. You know, we could almost even... See if I've got any blueprints I don't want just going to waste. I can incorporate them into this into some of these builds. Claire, that's kind of what we were going after. Remember, I kind of wanted the, I wanted the dome to be kind of like encapsulated almost, you know, um, and to be the like the centerpiece of the, of the uh, kind of like the expedition over here. You know, one of these little, one of this this little scrub building right here that I had for a while. Dang! Look how the exhibits that just kind of butts up against that. Pretty cool. I could probably close that in, and that could just kind of tie in with the dome. <laughs> and then right here could be like a, could be like a snowmobile. Um, could be like the maintenance shop over here. Like when I custom create some. Some snowmobiles. That kind of fits on pretty well to the whole compound. And then the actual polar bears, you know, they're going to... I figure it's going to kind of branch off over here because, remember, it's not going to be like an exhibit. This is going to be a holding area for the polar bears. So... Yes, we do not need to make it one million square miles. <laughs> this is just holding them for checkups, blood work, um, surgeries, and then returning them <laughs> back to the wild. But, you know, when you get them in your all zoos, if you want them to... If you want to turn this into more of a of a habitat, you know, that's on you. If, I mean, if you think that'd be cool. Watch your eyes. Yeah, that even looks okay during the day. Then I'll kind of get this boxed in as like a maintenance shop and like we said, maybe get the snowmobiles in there. 
Oops, I got a random rock. But yeah, guys, the research center is absolutely growing, isn't it? <laughs> this is turning out pretty cool. Was not too sure about this one when we first started, but I think we might be able to make it work. But yeah, guys, I'm going to jump off here, go grab something to eat. Start looking at my notes, and then we will uh, jump into some D&D, hopefully right at 8 o'clock. And, uh, yeah, they, you know, they're talking about one day maybe live streaming those sessions. I don't know. I don't know when or if, but they have, uh, they have chatted about it before. Um, you know, kind of like we kind of do this through Discord. So everybody's kind of got their, you know, everybody's set up and... We talk through that. So, you know. You all look out on uh, Twitter and Instagram. We'll get, I'll get some really cool picture. Probably from this angle right here of our little dome. To show people. Of our stream. Our stream if from the stream. That's what, I'll, that's what I'll say. I'll say this is our stream from the stream. And I will probably catch you guys tomorrow evening. We'll get back to working on some polar bear mischief. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.